all. Welcome to the Captain Developer Meeting. Today is uh, December 2nd, and we have several topics in our agenda. All right, yeah, the first one is uh, that we release Captain 0.11.2. Well, I'm just bringing the announcement, but the work was uh, done by the Captain Core team. Uh, Giovanni, do you have some updates that we wanna share with the community in this regard? Uh, yes, please mind that we have a breaking change. So do the backup, then the upgrade, and then the restoring of the backup. Otherwise you might lose some important data because we change our uh, database, the Mongo image. And therefore you need now to really do all the steps on the upgrade process. And we identified also some smaller issue with this release and we are working towards improving it and fixing these. And we will do a follow-up uh, patch release, so 0.11.3 in the next days. All right. Uh, thanks for the update. You're welcome. Okay. Um, other than that, there is nothing from my end to talk about, meaning that I would like to hand over to Moritz, who is next in the list. Yes, thank you. I'm quickly going to share. You won't take and uh, share the screen for you. But... Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It. Um, yeah, so in my sprint, I worked on research and actually implementation um, for replacing um, our Dependabot with Renovate. Um, and for that, I can quickly show um, the PR for the configuration. Um, basically, we did that change because Dependabot um, became kind of a pain for the developers. Um, it wasn't configurable enough for us um, for our monorepo setup with, with lots and lots of different um, dependencies to manage. As you can see here, that's all different files slash um, yeah, Docker files, Helm charts, whatever, um, where versioning happens and where um, uh, a bot is great to, to update all that. Um, and we said, let's do it. We're going to switch to renovate. Um, so we did that now. Um, and that should hopefully uh, reduce the PR load um, for our CICD pipelines and also, of course, for our developers. Um, and actually, um, renovate has a dependency dashboard issue. Um, I would open it here. Basically, that's an issue, like a constant issue. It's always open and it's always updated automatically by Renovate with um, stuff that, that is a waiting schedule. So basically, that's PRs that are going to be created soon when the schedule hits, basically. Um, and then actually, you also get a list of open PRs and can directly, for example, rebase them if you check the checkboxes here. Um, you also see um, ignored stuff. So basically, here, for example, I close that pull request because we don't need that change for now. Um, this is going to show up down here. Um, I also pinned that issue so that it's easy to find. It's always at the top now of the GitHub issues page. Um, yeah. Other changes. Um, I fixed two bugs um, in the release automation pipelines. Um, one was basically the uh, a fix for the version enforcement. Um, it was a, a yeah, very minor change, more like a typo almost. Um, yeah, so this basically meant that um, you couldn't really set the version to whatever you wanted, um, like it was intended to um, to work. Um, yeah, so basically I fixed that. Um, and the second issue was actually came up with um, the 0.11.1 release. Um, where we found out that on maintenance branches, um, the releases didn't work um, because of our branch protection rules that we have. So, so that's all the fix now. Where basically the fix was um, that the, the removal of the branch protection was always set to the default branch, uh, which of course doesn't work if it's not the default branch. Um, so this is now changed to also work with the maintenance branches that we have now. Um, yeah, and that's already it for me. Handing over to Klaus. Okay, thanks. Let me share the screen. Okay. 
so uh yeah from bridge side uh yeah some bugs some improvements and features i will begin with the bugs firstly uh services weren't uh, updated after project change so if you were uh in the service screen and then change to another project then seems like this is not merged <laughs> yeah so you see the problem here uh services are not updated and they should update if you yeah change the project and yeah maybe on a, I'm, i am on an old branch but yeah okay <laughs> To the next bug. Uh, yeah, sequences were removed in some cases in the sequence screen. Uh, if you were in the sequence screen, there were some, uh, there was a race condition for the project endpoints, for projects endpoint and the project endpoint that they overrode each other and then all sequences were lost. So after yeah, some milliseconds, if you load the page. And this has been fixed now and yeah, they are not removed anymore. The next bug, uh, there were some updates in the environment screen. Uh, currently we have an interval for about 30 seconds and then we uh, update the environment screen every time. Uh, this did not work as expected because new services were not added or services were not deleted. Also, uh, the filter here for the quality gate, failed quality gates, approval or remediations were reset after the polling. And yeah, this is also now fixed. Or uh, it is, yeah, uh, draft PR is open at the moment. Next to that, uh, some improvements regarding the project endpoint of the bridge server. There were a lot of API calls and they are yeah, reduced by about two thirds of the API calls. This is, at the moment, it is not the perfect solution, but uh, with another fix that is coming soon, uh, this will be reduced to about six API calls and it will not scale anymore with the, the stages or services we have. Next to that, some features. The event picker, for example, in the webhook. Uh, if we go to the webhook screen. Yeah. Uh, there is now this new icon to select the uh, event variable of a payload that is uh, yeah, selected here. So, for example, if you take approval.started, an intersection between the filter that I provide here for the stage and the service uh, is then returned. What you can see here now, yeah, approval has data, message, project, service, et cetera, the started event. And yeah, you can also set it to a specific uh, stage or service and then the intersection is adjusted. And it is also, uh, there's also a fallback. So if there isn't any data available, or yeah, if there isn't any data available or any intersected uh, same data, then the default uh, is taking, which is just your yeah, captain context time, type ID, and data like project, service, and stage. Yeah, and this is also considered for which stage and which service. Any questions to that feature? Very nice. Uh, Klaus, can you show us the, the actually the, the output of this picker by selecting uh, a property? The, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you select then this one, then event.data.project is selected here. And this also uh, considers an array. So if the, an array is provided, you can also select the right index or the right item in it. And also an object if there is an object in the array. But why do I need this in the URL? 
uh, could be for some redirects. If you do a webhook to a specific project, for, ex for example, you can add it to, yeah. But the functionality is the same in custom payload. Yeah, exactly the same. You can also select okay. here the same thing, and this is then added here. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, then, yeah, the border state. Uh, the border state was before not yeah, displayed or uh, differently displayed as succeeded. It was just displayed as succeeded one with yeah, everything in green. And yeah, seems like everything worked. But now it is differently displayed with uh, yeah, gray uh, color also for the stage. And this is now an indicator that the sequence is aborted. And this is uh, adjusted or displayed here. Also, if you go to the dashboard, you can also see this icon is adjusted and it is aborted. And also in the service screen, here we have, what was it? I think it was this one. Or oh, not because it's not deployed. But yeah, here should it also be considered and displayed in gray if there is an aborted one. Uh, can you please go once back to, to this one, to the sequence, yeah? Click on it. Yeah. So the shipper controller finishes still with result pass. Yeah. And how do you detect that the sequence was aborted? Uh, this is then uh, uh, in the sequence endpoint we have, there is a state which indicates if it was aborted or succeeded of something. So we have for these sequences, uh, everyone, every sequence, each, each sequence has a state, and this is then aborted also for a specific stage. Mm -hmm. And this gives the information. So that it is not in the payload, but for the sequence data, it is here. I see. Thank you. So, a general question, not only to you, but as a user, if I read shipper controller finished with result pass, I could could also mean, or this could mean to me that the sequence fully executed successfully, but actually the, the sequence was more supported. Yeah. What's your feeling here or in progression? On the one side pass, nothing failed, but on the other side, it isn't finished. So yeah, it is as yeah. expected, I agree, but but it is also not, not finished. I have a question. If the help service would return a uh, error, then mm -hmm. it would be printed cheaper finish with result fail. Right. And also the board around the, the whole sequence would be red then. And Maybe it would have even helped me if, if the sequence would not have a green border, but um, a gray border. Okay, yeah, then we need this information inside the event because I can have but, multiple sequences here. And then, I, yeah, maybe the last one should always be probably. But maybe I have, have to also rethink this whether it is really necessary. We can, can discuss this offline. Please. Thank okay. you. Then, yeah, that's basically from my side. Are there any questions? If not, then I will hand over to Andre. Thanks. I will share my screen. So, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so I will be a little bit quicker. Andre, you're, you're super uh, quiet again. Yeah. Difficult to hear you. It's better now. Yes. Yeah, good. Yes, yeah, so I will start. Uh, yeah, actually, in the last sprint, we have the legacy code responsible for <laughs> Your volume drops down after you start talking. 
Gosh, it's better now. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. What's this? I have uh, the same problem. If you use uh, Dell Precision, uh, then uh, it's uh, automatic configuration of uh, suppression. Okay, I will try uh, to. Yeah, we can uh, follow up later. Because okay. the same. Yeah. Yeah, so for the third time. Uh, yeah, uh, actually in the last sprint, Second thing was um, Giovanni also mentioned that we had a breaking change uh, when migrating from section 0 to dot 10 to 0 dot 11, uh, where users need to back up uh, the test days and then restore it. So we added uh, integration test to make sure everything works good in this field. Yeah, uh, also some security vulnerabilities were spotted in Capstan. So we improved and added some more meaningful uh, error messages in webhook service or home service. Uh, actually the error messages have contained some uh, internal information about the Capstan. So the attacker should, can, potenti can potentially uh, use this information for an attack. So this, this was actually fixed. And the last thing, uh, there was a problem with the end, uh, endpoint flag during Captain authorization. Uh, it was when the user didn't add the HTTP or HTTPS protocol, uh, then an error occurred. So currently, if the user skips the protocol, um, it's added automatically. So that should be also fixed. Not much from my side, other than if there are not any questions, then I can pass it to Bernd. Please. Yeah, Bernd and Florian are not here, so we just say a few words for them. Uh, let me share my screen. Why it dropped down? Uh, yes. So <clears throat> Bern uh, worked on um, circumvent some restriction of Mongo database because with Mongo import and Mongo export, there are some limitations while using dots inside the field name of a collection. And therefore we circumvent this restriction. And also work on the server side of the feature that Klaus presented before about providing this support status as part of the sequence. Is hey, that the yeah? One question here, uh, um, again to the back, and sorry for interrupting. So, when the shipper controller gets the aborted um, via the API, does the shipper controller send out um, the finished event for the for the for the sequence with the result aborted, or is the result here passed? I don't want to say something wrong, but I think it's pass. Okay, okay, this explains the, the text in bridge then. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I, I fully got it. Thank you, Anna. Okay, then Florian work on quite some bug fixes. Um, one for the configuration service, where when there was some there were some problems with unzipping the Helm charts. Then also work on the bug fixing for the distributor, where in some random cases of, um, what do you call it? When multiple instances occurs, then the subscription was not applied correctly. And also a problem with the Mongo database data store, where if we lose the connection to the database, a nil pointer exception could occur. And we also work a bit over the high availability of Captain, providing multiple replicas so we can process multiple mess messages at most once. So when we have multiple replica of one service in Captain and we send out one message, only one of the multiple replicas will take care of answering to that message. 
so we don't duplicate the work. And that's everything for them. So I will end over to Oleg. Thank you. So just a second, I'll screen share. Okay, do you see my screen? So it's just a quick update and not that engineering one. So just if everyone is fine, I will be using uh, one of these meetings to also sync up because some of uh, the topics uh, impact uh, uh, those who work on Captain. I mean, on uh, the code side. Is it fine with you or would you prefer me to do updates elsewhere? Okay, uh, so yeah, one of the things we started the new community and outreach channel. Uh, one of the reasons is to offload uh, various uh, discussions like whether we should switch to Bevy, its community Linux foundation, org, and so on. Uh, so to exclude it uh, from the Captain uh, project channel, which is historically more development one, so we detached these activities and you're interested, please feel free to join. Uh, and yes, yeah, speaking of uh, Bevy, uh, from where it came, uh, um, yeah, we have currently issues with our Zoom account because we want to transfer the, our Zoom account to the CNCF, but uh, strategically CNCF wants to move out of Zoom and to consolidate on community Linux Foundation org. It's uh, their platform. It's based on Bevy, it's another service. It provides basically meetup platform, a video meeting platform with recording, hosting with some community pages, all integrated with uh, the Linux Foundation accounts. So the proposal on the table is instead of transferring Zoom account, uh, try out Bevy for a few meetings. We can stop it, it's currently in beta and see how it works uh, for the teams. So my question to everyone on the call, would you like to try? Or would you like to keep meetings as is and maybe host another meeting as a test? I'm supporting the, the move since we have to um, change the, the Zoom link anyways. I assume it's just another link we have to click before or to get into the meeting. I'm, I'm fine um, with that. It's yet to be tested, uh, so I will be verifying uh, the flow. I assume mm -hmm. that uh, everyone will have to register on the Linux Foundation side. Actually, everyone is expected to register anyway, uh, because Captain is a part of the CNCF, which is a part of the Linux Foundation. But apart from that, you can register by connecting your GitHub account, and uh, then everything should be smooth. So before we roll it out, uh, I will get it tested. And actually, to get it tested, we need one of uh, Captain maintainers uh, to submit a request on a service desk. And uh, I would definitely use some help here. And actually, we have one uh, um, uh, inconsistency because uh, as far as Linux Foundation is concerned, uh, this is the list of Captain maintainers. So it's basically Giovanni, Johannes, Christian, Jurgen, Andres, and Alois. Uh, so we have a misconnect. I created a ticket for myself to resolve it at some point. Uh, but it would be nice if somebody could just uh, submit uh, this request so that we uh, get uh, it rolling. <laughs> Actually, I was not aware that CNCF is tracking also maintainers on their end and uh, have, not, have never seen uh, this table, but we can update it, of course. Yeah, I created a task uh, for myself to do it. I have no idea uh, from where this list comes from, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I will figure it out. Uh, so uh, who would be able to submit a request? For a PV? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, um, I can do this. Yeah, I can help you, Johannes, if you need mm -hmm. help, no worries. If needed, we can just sync up uh, tomorrow and uh, get submitted. Fine. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is basically all on Zoom slash communication channels. 
I believe that I will also try to get Julia participating in this effort because it's also a community platform with a lot of content management capabilities. So this is something we will try to do together. Okay, another update. I just started uh, creating community management uh, backlog, mostly from my notes. Uh, if you have any items in mind, like uh, how it would be better, so whether you need some bots, whether you need better guidelines, etc. If it doesn't fit other repositories, you can just drop uh, uh, this item here and uh, I will uh, try to somehow sort them. I have maybe a few dozens of others uh, to create, but yeah, you can see that it's a kind of brain dump at the moment. So mentorship programs, uh, community Linux foundation or creating artwork repositories, whatever. So basically, if you see how you could improve Captain as community and uh, then just submit your ideas here or uh, put them to Slack and I will be happy to discuss it there too. And yes, yeah, speaking of the repositories, um, I would like to ask uh, for creating a, a .github repository. So uh, at the, the meeting last one week ago, I briefly demoed uh, what it is on the Captain Sandbox. Uh, basically, it's just uh, a way to generalize uh, how GitHub metadata works. So for example, in this repository, uh, we have uh, uh, code of conduct, contributing guidelines, readme, security guidelines, all of that uh, is basically defaults to the entire GitHub organization, unless you overwrite them. And there are some additional features like uh, small profile, which just goes uh, to the landing page. So it can be used for additional navigation. So here, for example, I put links to Captain Core, Captain Integrations and other things. It's just quality of life improvement, but sometimes it helps because many services, including CNCF, they actually point to GitHub root at the moment. So github.com slash captain. And if you navigate today, you might be lost. Well, uh, you will definitely discover Captain Core, uh, but you will have difficulties with discovering uh, Captain Sandbox and Captain integrations. Uh, so I think that it would be nice to do such improvement. And another thing which I configured in this repository for demo purposes is basically template issues. So again, uh, it allows to roll, roll out samples for all the repositories. So for example, in my POC, it looks like that. So I still need the screen button. So basically you can uh, create a issue dialog. It even uh, gets better in new versions because you can uh, use issue forms. But we could uh, create default some like bug, uh, bug report, feature requests. I copied these templates from the captain repository. Also, we could create something for documentation. And one valuable thing, if you use this approach, you can create some metadata, for example, pointing users to captain Slack and uh, uh, pointing them to security vulnerability reporting guidelines, which might be important if somebody tries to submit uh, a security issue in public GitHub repository. We had it in Jenkins, it's not fun. So maybe it will uh, help a bit. So I would like to set up something like that in Captain gradually, uh, but in order to set it up, I would need a, a .github repository so that I could start submitting pull requests and then the Captain maintainers could review them and decide whether we merge them or not. That's amazing actually, to have that all in one place. Um, one question though, um, the, all the other files in there, like the contributing guidelines and all that, um, does that mean that we should then, if we want to use the default one, we should delete the files in the, in the yep. Captain Core repo, for example? Yeah, if you want to switch to default ones, you just delete them and the GitHub will pick them up automatically. Uh, full but disclaimer, it doesn't uh, replace hyperlinks from external locations. So for example, if you referenced a contributing guideline like this link, if you just remove it, uh, GitHub won't do any magic for you to discover it from the global repository. Uh, okay. But otherwise it works pretty smooth. Are the files still gonna show up in the Captain Core repo then in any way or do you? Yes. Oh yeah, okay. Even though so, they're not there actually. Yep. Uh, 
well, uh, they will be showing up in metadata. So something like oh, that. Yeah. So for example, readme, code of conduct, license, uh, security guidelines, and also in the issue dialogues. So for example, if I go to repository where I have never done anything like this one, uh, so then uh, I create new issue and uh, I should, yeah, and here I get a new dialogue, uh, which also points to all this uh, metadata uh, for new users. So they have some kind of automation. And later That's we awesome. can use uh, the same template repositories, for example, to create uh, workflows uh, on GitHub Actions. So for example, we can add a welcome board or something like that, uh, the, the organization uh, wide scale. Um, yeah, it's just quality of life. But uh, sometimes when you work uh, with newcomer contributors during Oktoberfest, etc., it's really helpful to have such uh, quick and botting flow. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So if I could get a repository, I will be happy to gradually set it up. But again, uh, I'm not asking for right permissions. Uh, maybe just for issue triage, uh, or but yeah, I will be operating through pull requests anyway. So, okay. um, actually, I, I can take care of, of creating uh, the GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the same or rather quick question for artwork. Uh, usually projects create uh, separate artwork repositories where they dump all the content like logos, various open graphs, uh, various images, etc. So currently we store it um, in a captain slash community, but even there, there is not all artwork being used uh, widely. So I wonder whether it makes sense to actually create a separate repository, put a, a artwork contributing guidelines there, make a license explicit, because currently I do not know what is the license for Captain Artwork. I will need, I assume it's a Creative Commons, but uh, it's something I will need to figure out. So I wonder whether it makes sense to create a separate repository and basically uh, move all the stuff there. What do you think again? Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good idea to have this in a consolidated uh, repo um, because I also know that in Captain Captain we have the logo and maybe also somewhere else. Uh, to, have one, to have this in one place is definitely a good idea. Yeah at least official source of truth, because sometimes when you work on presentation, you need, let's say, a uh, white logo for dark presentation styles, like uh, the Netrace presentation template. And then you struggle to find it uh, somewhere in Google search. Uh, and yeah, actually it's fun because I'm not sure whether you actively use Jenkins these days, but uh, yeah, in our case, uh, these repositories became a kind of source of various contributions and some uh, bit of community bonding. So if somebody is interested in graphics design, <laughs> just bring it on. If everyone agrees, uh, yeah, again, I could ask someone to create the repository and then, uh, yeah, probably I'll ask for right permissions there at some point because it's definitely not impeding production use cases for Captain. Uh, but yeah, it's better to create it earlier so that uh, the, flow, the flow is running. I think I have permission to do that so I can help you there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so basically these are all updates uh, from me. Again, if it's not something interesting for the most of the team, uh, I can try to find another venue uh, for such discussions. But yeah, I thought that it might be interesting because it inputs uh, the team. It, it is definitely an interesting content. and. Uh also sharing this in this round, I think makes uh, sense. Okay, so let's keep doing it like that then. 
All right, yeah, with that, uh, we are now at the end of the, of the agenda. Are there any questions to bring up? Yeah, so maybe one heads up. Uh, soon there will be a call for FOSDEM applications. Uh, so there is CICD room accepted um, and the captain would be welcome there. Also, there will be an opportunity to have a developer table uh, for captain. So if someone is interested to participate, it will be online this uh, well, next year. And we, let's discuss it in the chats. But yeah, usually FOSDOM is also a good way to discuss various open source initiatives. Cool. I was not aware. I was not aware about this conference. Okay, then uh, I'll, yeah, I'll drop the link because it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest open source conference in Europe. Before COVID, uh, so in 2019, uh, it had almost 12,000 participants. Uh, it happens in Belgium, uh, so yeah, it was really fun. But now with online, of it's of course a bit different for everyone. Okay, I'll send uh, the links to force them uh, in the chat. All right, any additional uh, thoughts or north uh, issues to tell us or things? If not, then let's close it for today and see you then next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.